Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of Liège, Bastion Liège, Women's Race 2021, Van Vleuten, Anna van der Brecken, Mariana Vos all in attendance, AVDB having won Flesch Wallon on Wednesday, Vos winning Amstel Gold Race in a reduced bunch sprint ahead of following last weekend. The course actually goes from Baston to Liège. They don't start in Liège, it's 141 k's, doesn't finish with a climb like in Flesh Wallon, but it's harder than Amstel Gold Race despite the flat finish in the last 10 kilometers. The climbs of note in the last 40 kilometers are exactly the same pretty much as the men's race, the Côte de la Redoute cresting with 40 k's to go, and the Côte de la Rochelle Faucon and Boncel combo cresting with 10 kilometers to go. We didn't see the rollout, but live images started with about 45 kilometers to go. SD Works got Knee Fisher Black, very strong young rider, in a breakaway which forced Trek, Bike Exchange and Movistar to pace behind. This is what Trek have been doing actually to SD Works. They did it in Flesh and in a couple of other races this year. But for the pivotal moments of this race, SD Works were always on the front foot. Knee Fisher Black brought back with 38 k's to go before the Cote de la Redoute. Alarud pacing for Movistar and then Mulman. The minute Nee Fisher Black brought back the Zwift world champion, the South African attacking, dropping Alarud, dropping Marta Cavalli. There wasn't too much reaction from the main contenders apart from Cecilia Utrup Ludwig attacking in the mid part of the Redoute, trying to bridge across to Mulman. A good move from her. She was let go pretty much by Longo Borghini and Van der Brehen and Mariana Voss and Van Vleuten. I think for someone like Ludwig against those runners, she needs to go early and try and get a gap. She reaches Mulman and Lucinda Brandt on the ridge line above Cote de Redoute. So SD Works and Trek now have a rider each up the road. Not their main contenders, but enough to make Mariana Voss concerned that this group would not work together. She tries to bridge across to them unsuccessfully. They were working fairly well initially until Mulman started to sit on on the flat sections. You can see the group very close, six to eight seconds behind them. However, that second group was subsumed by the larger chasing group. None of the contenders were willing to chase apart from Voss. So Canyon Shram and Movistar started pacing. Canyon Shram for their contender Nuvia Doma, second at Flesh on Wednesday. Van Vleuten just coming into shot in the European National Champs jersey for Movistar. And as you can see, Mulman wasn't really willing to work with these three on the flat. Lucinda Brand was lent on a lot on the flat. Mulman did do work on the climbs, which is what they're on now, the Côte de Forge. And they extended that gap throughout the climb. Mulman pulling really hard, basically her head-to-head -head against Annemiek van Vleuten's domestique. So with 23 k's to go, 9 to 10 k's until the last climb, the Côte de la Rochelle Faucon, SD Works still have a rider up the road. Canyon Shram and Jumbo Visma still on the back foot, having to chase this group down, and Mulman wasn't having to do too much work in that group either. But they were brought back 6 k's or so before the Côte de la Rochelle Faucon by Jumbo Visma, Canyon Shram and Movistar. Then into the base of that nasty climb, Côte de la Rochelle Faucon, Chantal van der Broek Black, winner of Tour of Flanders last year, started pacing really hard with the world champion from the base of that climb starting to pace and dropping other riders. Mavi Garcia, the biggest name you can see dropping at this point. Taylor Wills for Trek Segafredo, Voss at the back of that group. We saw her doing the exact same thing at Flesh Wallon, winding it up from the base, and that's what she did today on the Cote de la Roche or for Quant. And you might be wondering, why is she doing that? She hasn't really attacked. She's got all the other contenders on her wheel. It's a bit strange, isn't she just leading up Van Vleuten? Well, their strategy SD works was to ride for Demi following today. They want to make this as hard as possible so that they keep Demi following in this group, but drop Mariana Voss. Mariana Voss is the main rider they were concerned about at Amstel Gold Race last weekend. Voss, I mean, if she hadn't sat up, she would have won by even more, but following was the only one that even came close, beating Van Vleuten in that sprint. So they're trying to keep following in this group with Van der Breggen's steady pace, but drop Voss, which they do with Utra Ludwig on her wheel as they go over the summit with Longo Borghini in that group. Ludwig and Voss now chasing on this short, flatter section before the last ball cell climb. And it was a bit curious what SD Works did at this point. You'd think they'd want to drive home their advantage quickly on Mariana Voss, but they waited up for Ashley Mulman Passio just behind her. You can see that little speck behind the front group, which allowed Voss and Ludwig to catch up. But the problem for Voss was that she'd be doing so much work. And when Annemiek van Vleuten attacked on the Bon Cell, that was the end of her and Ludwig's race. That van Vleuten attack created a split 
which dropped Demi Vollering, so a bit of an issue for SD Works, but luckily they had Nuvia Doma pacing her back, and the second that they got Vollering back in that group, Anna van der Brecken went into TT mode, the world champion in the individual time trial. Voss, Ludwig dropped, Mulman just sitting on, and so 8.6 case to go, 28 second gap, 6.7 33 second gap, 5.4, 37 second gap, and it kept going up and up until the last K under the Flamme Rouge. Van der Breggen had extended that gap on her own out to a minute, with no one else in this group having taken a pull in the last 10 kilometers after the bowl cell climb. And they were riding 100% for following in the sprint. And if you're wondering why that is, just to remind you of who's who in this group, you've got Elisa Longo Borghini, the Italian national champion at the back of this group. Not a renowned sprinter, definitely not against someone like Vollering. Nuvia Doma, second wheel as well, not as quick as Vollering on paper. The main danger would be Van Vleuten. She could beat Demi Vollering if she made a mistake, but she's planted perfectly right on Annemiek Van Vleuten's wheel and Van der Breggen just starts to wind this up, leading it all the way out to the last 275 metres. It was actually good that she dropped off Nuvi Adoma a little bit earlier. Headwind in this sprint, and that means when Annemiek van Vleuten jumps early with Vollering right on her wheel with 200 metres to go, she provides the perfect slipstream to Vollering, who jumps out with 110 metres, clear onto the line, and she dusts everyone off the double celebration from the world champ having sacrificed her own ambitions perfect teamwork from sd works crafting this absolutely textbook win and this is one of the best moments from liege today the ecstasy of vollering and van der breggen after executing their plan to perfection van vleuten second elisa longo borghini third let's hear what vollering had to say after the biggest win of her career today. Can you take us through what happened on those uh, that final kilometer, the, f the five girls battling it out, explain the, the outcome? Uh, yeah, well, it was really hard on the climbs. And uh, yeah, at one moment, um, we were gone with this group, which we finished with. And then first uh, Vos came back, but yeah, it's better to, to not sprint with her, of course. So I was really happy that, uh, did it br uh, break again and uh, yeah, Anna did the lead out, I think the last 10k or something, it was it was awesome. But here's the final results, Demi Vollering first, Van Vleuten second, Longo Borghini third, Nuvia Doma fourth, Van der Brecken fifth, Voss ahead of Mulman, Passio, Ludwig, Brandt and Spratt making up the top 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got to say the Women's Ardennes video I've made have been a rip-roaring success, exceeding even my expectations. So if you like this video, like it down below. I think the next one I'll have is La Course on June 26th. So a bit of a gap till the next women's race. That's on the first day of the Tour de France. But if you want to see my immediate reaction to races and all women's world tour and men's world tour races, then you've got to check out the Lantern Rouge cycling podcast. If you haven't seen it already, which I assume most of you have, it's a separate YouTube channel and it's on all major podcast players. If you like these videos, you'll be sure to love that as well. So go and check that out and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.